we may react to traumatic experiences in five major ways, including fight or flight. In this podcast, two trauma experts discuss the freeze response, Amy Apigian and Jeffrey Rutstein. Amy Apigian, MD, is an author, speaker, and founder of Trauma Healing Accelerated. Once a person has gone into the freeze response, it just, it's time. We can be bringing in the support. We definitely want to be bringing in the energy and the support. And we just have to wait. We just have to wait. I will say that when we bring in the right kinds of support, the right kinds of energy, I have seen the time needed for the freeze response to become less. And yet every person, every body, every nervous system seems to have its own rough time schedule for the freeze response. So there is a a time schedule and There's also some flexibility with that, depending on how we can come in and support the body during that time. So let's take an example. Yeah, let's take an example of someone who has gone into the freeze response. Doesn't matter why or how, right? And they're in the freeze response. And so they are feeling that exhaustion, they're feeling the collapse, they're feeling the shame, they're feeling the the awful discomfort of stuff, right? And so they go and buy the brownies and ice cream. Oh, don't look at me like that. You've done that too before. (laughs) So what is that doing to the system that's just gone into the freeze response? How is that going to affect what's going on in the physiology? It's going to be depleting even more energy. That's right. It's going to be causing more inflammation. That's right. And so that is one way in which, yes, there is this temporary self-soothing effect. And you're also making it harder for your body to have what it needs to come out of the freeze response. And so this is a beautiful example of how all of this comes together, where when a person goes into the freeze response, I would love for them to curl up into a ball. I mean, that's what the body wants to do anyway. So why don't we just go there, right? (laughs) Rather than fight it, rather than fight it, because that's going to take up energy. We allow it we welcome it it's it's here to stay anyway so we might as well we might as well so what if we were to acknowledge and allow it and actually allow the body to go into a full collapse when i'm working with someone and i can see that they're in the freeze response i invite them to do that i invite them to just hang right like you feel the heaviness you see their shoulders drooping and i'm like just go for it right rather than trying to hold yourself up and back and your stomach hurts i can i can see that you just want to fold over why don't we just do that and just see how that feels the reason why we don't do that is because we're afraid we have fear that's connected with the freeze response and we've had this fear of if I allow my body to go there, I'll probably never come out. (laughs) Do you remember having some of those thoughts? (laughs) Yeah, so I better just not even go there, right? Let me fight this the whole way. My goodness, like what an energy drain though. And we're, we're supposed to be bringing energy into the system. And so when we just allow it to do what it needs to do, it will come out sooner. And the, the there is a purpose for the freeze response. And that purpose is to build enough energy up again. Dr. Jeffrey Rutstein is a clinical psychologist and host of the Healing Trauma Program. Evolution has gifted us with an ability to survive from a very, very dangerous past until now. It's done so 
by giving all mammals five defensive survival states. These states are designed so that when we face danger, we survive. Some of these states you've heard of or are familiar with, some you may be less familiar with. Today, I want to talk about freeze. Freeze is a, a state that a lot of people are less familiar with because it doesn't happen to them. The classic freeze, like this figure, eyes wide open, mouth agape, frozen, almost like a statue. The outside of the person is immobilized. They're not moving, they're barely breathing. But on the inside, on the inside, they are activated like a volcano. They're having a panic attack. Their heart is beating through their chest. Often, it's beating so strong and so loud, they can hear the blood rushing in their ears. Sweating, getting dizzy, muscles tensing up, losing feeling in the body. But from the outside, it looks like someone has just become a statue. You may notice in yourself some more subtle reactions of this uh, freeze response. Say, for example, you're in a board meeting or a, an important presentation at work. And without warning, you're called on to give an update to the whole group. You may find that all of a sudden, thoughts and words leave your mind. You, you don't know where to start. You, you don't know what to talk about or the facts about them. You're experiencing a moment of freeze. You're not able to think clearly. You're not able to express anything. Or it's fumbling, um, er, uh, because we're frozen. Again, doesn't seem like we're doing much on the outside, but if you've ever been in that position, your insides are really revved up. Freeze protects us when the options for fight or flight aren't available. We can't fight our way to safety and we can't run our way to safety. So then the option is, well, we'll just not do anything. We'll just stay still. I don't know what to do. In those moments, people don't feel like they're in control. They feel terribly frightened and terribly out of control and have no way of knowing how to get out of this state. If you've experienced trauma, then there's a likelihood you're more familiar with the freeze response because it's a very common response when people encounter overwhelming and traumatic situations especially ones where we can't run and we can't fight, freeze is very common. You also may experience a cousin of the freeze state called shutdown. Shutdown is similar to freeze, but the outsides and the insides are closer together, meaning in shutdown, you tend to go to sleep. You tend like someone has given you a drug. You just can't keep your eyes open for another second. And in shutdown, in those moments, the body is much more quiet and the mind is almost basically off. That's an even more extreme state than freeze. And again, if you've had severe trauma, you'll be familiar with shutdown. We'll talk much more about shutdown and the ways of working with it in our upcoming program. This material in an excerpt from a longer podcast or video. Follow link in description to learn more.